Hello everyone and welcome to the week 7 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Bourne. We start in LA where Bruce Arena was irate at the officials after sporting Kansas City's momentary equalizer. He felt there was a foul on LA defender AG De La Garza committed by Dom Dwyer. And I've got to say, we have a high and wide angle replay here and it does look to me like there's a two-handed shove in De La Garza's back. Now, Sporting Kansas City got lucky twice in this game, in my opinion. In the 82nd minute, Juninho simply wants the ball to take a free kick, and Roger Espinosa refuses to give it to him, and even swings his arm and elbow a few times at Juninho. But it's Juninho who gets the yellow card. Espinosa, who was already on a yellow, would have been sent off. Next to Red Bull Arena, where I thought the San Jose Earthquakes had a good argument for a penalty in the 68th minute. Shea Salinas watches his cross strike Damian Perinel, who has his arm outstretched. But I'm guessing referee Jair Marufo feels the proximity of the defender to the ball means Perinel has no chance to react. I disagree. I think Perinel is making himself big, and I would have punished him for it. I think Perinel is twice lucky in this one. In the 71st minute, it looks like he trips up innocent Emehara in the box. Across the river in the Bronx, New York City FC had two home games this week. It started with Thursday's match against the Philadelphia Union and this rough tackle by Shane and Williams on Medi Bellucci in the 41st minute. Williams gets a yellow and I think it's the right call. It was reckless and nothing more. You see that Williams does not expose his studs. Oh, and we have a simulation in this one. This is Philly's Vincent Nogueira in the 22nd minute and referee Baldomero Toledo doesn't even hesitate. Obviously a good call. Another suspicious play took place in the 8th minute involving New York's Chris Wingard and Phillies Fernando Estegueta who got into it before a corner kick. You see the NYCFC player gesticulating that Estegueta caught him in the head. We don't get a clear look at what happened on the replays but we get a clue here. On this tight shot of goalkeeper John McCarthy you see Wingard's head and a blue blurb come through on the right side of the frame. But Wingard was dishing it out in the 19th minute against the Portland Timbers on Sunday. Check out how he goes in on Ismael Yarte. Welcome to MLS. That was ugly, but no foul called and no card. Another MLS veteran, Jack Jewsbury, went in for a rough tackle himself, but didn't get a card. In the 41st minute, it looks like the studs were showing when he went in on Patrick Mullins. But Jewsbury only gets a talking to from referee Armando Villarreal, who didn't flinch on this Jebrowski tackle on Fanendo Adi in the 75th minute. We don't have the best of replays here, but it suggests that Brovsky may have gotten Adi's foot first and then struck the ball with the trailing leg. That was probably a stronger case than this one in the 90th minute for Maxi Ruti, who looked like he was getting tossed around in the box by both of New York's center backs, but nothing that stood out to Villarreal, who was right there. Plenty to look at from Dick Sporting Goods Park, where referee Drew Fisher did well not to call a penalty 40 seconds into the match. It looks suspicious on a first look, but the replay seems to show that it's Juan Ramirez who collides into Sounders defender Brad Evans. In the 50th minute, these two would meet again in the box, and Evans looks to put his forearm into Ramirez's back, but he goes down way too easy in my opinion. I mean, you can see it. No penalty was again the right call by Fisher. Next, to a play involving the other Sounders center back, Chad Marshall. He went in with this straight-legged studs-up challenge on Vicente Sanchez in the 14th minute, which I think endangered the player's safety and should have been punished with a red. It's just brutal, but Fisher goes yellow. Fisher then had his hands full in the 35th minute when Clint Dempsey was brought down and Marcelo Sarvas kicks the ball into Dempsey, who takes exception. We'll give you a chance to listen to the net sound here so you can listen to the whistle. Nobody wants to connect with it. The kick and the whistle basically happened simultaneously. Still, I didn't like it one bit. Plus, what is Sarvis trying to do there by kicking the ball in that spot? I felt the red would not have been outrageous in this case. But Sarvis and Dempsey were not done, no siree. Less than five minutes later, they come together again, and this time there's what looks like a kick out by Sarvis into Dempsey's groin area. But when you watch the replay, it looks like Dempsey is actually holding Sarvis' right leg back, and the Rapids player is fighting through it, maybe a little too aggressively. I want to say it's violent conduct given how hard Sarvis pushes off, but the Dempsey arm on the leg muddles things up a little bit. Next up, Frisco, Texas and the five hour plus marathon at Toyota Stadium where a weather delay wreaked havoc. Only one play to look at here. I thought Toronto FC should have had a penalty in the 24th minute. You see Josie Altidore receives the ball in the box and Dallas defender Zach Lloyd has his hands all over him. 
pulling down on the player. Good enough for a penalty in my opinion, but Altidore only goes down when Michelle sticks a leg in there. Referee Ismail Althaf calls for the free kick outside the box, but I disagree. First, I think Lloyd is the one committing the foul, and that's definitely inside the box. Altador just doesn't go down. And then Michelle's foot is also inside the box when he lunges out to stop him. So whatever foul you're calling, I think it happened in the area. But Toronto, who were down 2-0 at the time, don't get the PK. To RFK Stadium, where there were three penalty kick appeals that we'll look at right here. DC United wanted a PK with the game still scoreless in the 20th minute, and I think they have a case. Houston defender Raul Rodriguez seems to apply a nudge into the back of Chris Pontius, who had a beat on it. But I'm sure Dynamo fans would argue that it's the same thing that happened to Ricardo Clark in the DC box in first half stoppage time. Davey Arno is the DC player who's making contact with Clark as this cross comes through. Another PK claim, this one in the 48th minute. Perry Kitchen wanted a call for an alleged Giles Barnes handball, but it's impossible for us to tell for sure on the replays. If it happened, Kitchen is the only one who saw it. Moving to PPL Park where there were two tackles that had some shouting for a red card. I'm not a fan of this tackle from behind by Lee Wynn in the 38th minute. I know tackles from behind are not automatic reds anymore, but I think the potential for injury on a slide like this is real. It turns out CJ Sapong was just fine and Wynn gets a yellow. And then in the 90th minute, it was Shane and Williams going in hard with studs up on Rev's hero Teal Bunbury. To me, that definitely endangered the safety and it could have been an ankle breaker, but referee Mark Geiger opts for a yellow there too. There were red cards at Rio Tinto. Two of them to be exact and both were shown to the home side, but the visitors probably could have been down a man as early as the sixth minute. Check out this Russell Tybert tackle on Olmes Garcia. Looks like endangering the safety to me and that's a red card offense. Referee Ted Uncle goes with a yellow and Tybert is lucky he didn't get a second yellow in the 87th minute for this handball. RSL's Hamis Olave got his second yellow in the 89th minute for tripping up Darren Maddox and stopping a dangerous Vancouver attack. Was it intentional or just clumsy? Didn't matter. The big Colombian center back doesn't even argue. He heads straight to the tunnel. That was the second RSL red card of the day. The first one, there was no doubt about it. Rookie Sebastian Saucedo gets it in the 76th minute for this tackle on Vancouver's Mauro Rosales. That's textbook endangering the safety. And before we leave Rio Tinto, Vancouver wanted a penalty in the 74th minute when Octavio Rivero gets the ball by Hamison Olave and then goes down. But Olave has position and it's Rivero running into the defender. Sorry, Octavio. Just six minutes later, the Whitecaps would find the winner via Darren Maddox in Vancouver. They're sitting pretty atop the league standings. And we end in Columbus where the turning point of the match was the red card to Rafael Ramos, who didn't get a whistle and then went diving into Waylon Francis in frustration. Referee Ricardo Salazar initially looked to be pulling out the yellow, but then went for the red. There were also questions on all three crew goals. We start with the first one. Assistant Andrew Bigelow doesn't flank the offside position of Kai Kamara, which we see here. So Ramos, just moments before his red card, continues play and disaster ensues. On the second crew goal, great job by the other assistant, Gianni Facchini, not to throw up his offside flag. Ethan Finley is in fact on. But then, I thought Kai Kamara fouled Orlando's Tyler Turner to win the ball back. It wasn't called, and the crew were up 2-0. On the third goal, we just don't have a good replay angle to show that Kamara was in fact not offside. So we'll give the assistant Facchini the benefit of the doubt here. Kamara thought he actually scored a fourth crew goal in the 75th minute, but the replay proves Facchini was right here. Kamara was off, and from what I can tell, he was in fact the one who gets the last touch on it. He also celebrated like he did. And as if the crew didn't have everything going their way already, they probably could have had a penalty four minutes after the break in my opinion. Check out this really aggressive tackle by Amobi Okugo on Ethan Finley in the Orlando box. Looked like a stone cold PK to me, but the officiating crew opts for the corner kick. Okugo was really playing on the edge in this one. Check out the 58th minute tackle on Emmanuel Pogatetz that earns him a yellow. Now, Orlando had a PK shot of their own, but this one was a pretty weak one in my opinion in the 81st minute. Pogatetz just outmuscles Carlos Rivas. Fair challenge. Look, this is a game that Orlando City and head coach Adrian Heath just have to forget about. Just throw it away. Wait, not like that. Tyler Turner got a do-over on that one. Throw-in was correctly taken, but the ball never entered the field of play. Laws of the game. Law 15. Know your laws. And remember to keep using hashtag instant replay for all the plays you want to see highlighted. That's all we have for this week. For our editor, Will Walsh, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.